Okay, Peter Beck, uh, the founder and CEO of Rocket Lab is joining us uh, for an interview. Uh, big news today is the announcement that Rocket Lab will be uh, launching its first mission from a new launch site, a new launch pad in uh, New Zealand uh, at, at the beginning of next week. So Peter, first of all, can you talk to us about why this new launch pad was uh, necessary, why you decided to build it? Yeah, so, um, you know, launch complex, that, launch complex one down in the Mahi Peninsula is, uh, you know, the world's first and only operational private orbital launch site. Um, and we built, you know, we call it, you know, pad one um, down there, uh, you know, quite some years ago, and it's, it's seen over, uh, you know, 100 satellites launched out of it. Um, but, uh, you know, to, to um, you know, meet the increased cadence that, that we want out of the site, um, we constructed pad B, which is basically uh, a replica of pad A with some slight improvements. And, uh, and now we, you know, we can process, uh, process two rockets and launch two rockets, um, you know, at the same time. So we, we have, uh, you know, a total of three clean rooms down there, um, two launch pads, and it really, really enables uh, the, the customer flow to, to be much more optimized. And of course, it, it gives us uh, extra ability to increase launch cadence. Um, we can have one pad uh, having maintenance on it while the other pad's still launching. So it, it really, you know, having those, those dual assets is just, um, is just you know, incredibly helpful for increasing launch cadence. I saw Rocket Lab release some photos, an aerial shot showing two electrons on each uh, launch pad. Pretty cool to see. Um, yeah, they look pretty close. Cool. Yeah, they look pretty close together. Uh, you know, how far apart uh, are the two pads and, uh, you know, how close also uh, of a turnaround can you have between a launch from pad A and B? Yeah, look, uh, you know, the, the explosive sighting distances are, you know, uh, are, are, all, are all to code. So, um, you know, with the intent purpose that if, 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 you know, God forsake there is an issue on one pad that we, we don't um, eliminate the infrastructure on another pad. So although they share some, some systems, they are basically, you know, completely standalone uh, operating systems. So, um, you know, as, as you saw from the video, we can we can operate the two pads independently, um, and uh, and and you know re really mitigate any any operational constraints that um, that you know that, that might be there when having two pads. Do they share a tank farm, or do you have separate uh, fueling systems for each uh, pad? Um, no. So they they are two completely independent systems. In fact, there's no reason why you couldn't launch two rockets at the same time. Um, they, uh, they, there is a transfer line between the tank farms, but they are completely separate, um, separate systems um, with their own, their own uh, tank farms. So, um, yeah, no, um, they, they, we, we share common facilities like clean rooms and, uh, and things like that. But as far as the pads go, they operate as completely independent systems. You, know, you talk about launching two rockets at the same time. That would be really, really awesome to see. That would be uh, cool. That would be yeah. really cool. <laughs> I'm not uh, sure how uh, flight safety would go with that um, because that, that would be troublesome. But at least at least in theory, um, you know, it gives us the ability to to you know be in the final preparations on one pad and have another rocket on the other pad, um, you know, getting ready to launch. So that independence of the systems is important. Um, how you know realistically, uh, how close can you have one launch from one pad to the other? Like uh, you know. From a flight safety standpoint, if that's the constraint, could you launch two uh, hours apart? Could you launch, you know, one day and then another day? What's the constraint? Well, honestly, it really comes down to uh, to, to the team. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it's it's there's a lot of work in launching a rocket, so um, you know, it, come, it really comes down to uh, how many uh, how many folks are on consoles um, at, at the time. I mean. Uh, you know, our, our, our goal here would be, you know, not to not to launch them within hours, but uh, certainly within um, within within a day or so. Um, that there would be no problems at all. But it, it really is a is a human resource issue, not not an infrastructure issue at that point. The um, you know you have a third launch pad at, at Wallops Island and at the Mid Atlantic Regional Spaceport. Um, what's the latest with uh, getting ready to launch there? I know there's been a kind of a bottleneck with the flight termination system certification from NASA. Um, so I've been following that from a, from a distance, but I uh, haven't heard any news super lately. What's the latest? Yeah, so, uh, so some of the software products released to us from, from NASA. So we're, we're going through our own uh, internal certification process on those. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we, we're seeing our way clear now with enough certainty to, to start planning, um, you know, the, the first launch attempt out of there. So, you know, the moment that, um, 
we can uh, we can get that that work done. But also, um, you know, appreciate logistics around the world are pretty tricky at the moment, um, and get a, a launch date site and launch date nailed down, then um, then we'll be able to announce it. But certainly, um, you know, we're, we're much more hopeful this year of of uh, seeing that that pad fully activated, given um, given uh, where NASA is at the moment on their their, their certification work. I know you've had a, a shuffle a couple of missions from Virginia to um, New Zealand. NASA's capstone mission comes to mind. I think there was a Space Force mission as well. Correct. Um, yep. uh, are those still planned from, is that capstone mission still planned from New Zealand? And have you identified a first launch, uh, first mission from Virginia yet? Yeah, so the capstone definitely where it's staying in New Zealand. Um, you know, that, that there's a tremendous amount of inertia to, to move something like that between sites. You know, in fact, we had to build an entire uh, an entire new clean room um, to support that mission uh, down in, in Launch Complex One. So uh, that's staying there. Um, really, really, the one of the, the biggest driving factors for that mission is uh, the trajectory analysis that's ongoing. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we're we're looking for minimum energies, and and so is our customer um, uh, for that mission. So uh, that that's you know, once once that work is complete. Um, you know the uh, you know the launch the launch date will be be settled in pretty pretty quickly. So uh, that that's probably one of the biggest driving factors right now is is um, is all, was all that analysis and and those tra trajectory products. Um, and then uh, what was the second part of your question? Sorry. Oh, if you've identified a first mission from Wallops, will it be a NASA mission, commercial, military? Once once we have kind of final certainty around the um, the AFTS uh, certification. Then, um, then we'll go through the process. But there's a, a number of customers that um, that we can launch out of there, uh, and um, you know, both government and commercial. Um, it, it'll really it'll really come down to when um, you know when when the right time is for that site to be activated, and then we'll we'll slot in, slot in you know, customers to suit. I remember you saying in the past that uh, one of the big uh, hurdles for getting Rocket Lab uh, to a launch ready operational state was developing a private space force. Spaceport, I, I think you said at one point you wouldn't recommend anyone do that, uh, <laughs> but you have now two launch pads in New Zealand. Uh, seems like you're doubling down on that. You've had to wait a little bit longer than you hoped for wallops. Um, are you rethinking that, or uh, is it still, if you're starting from a clean slate, is it still easier to, to go to an established range? Well, I mean, history would say that actually we had LC1 <clears throat> operational faster than we had LC2 operational. So you would have to say that uh, even, even though um, you know building building your own private site is is, is incredibly you know painful process, um, uh, and and I think uh, you know others in the industry are learning that um, as well. So this is this is not a this is not a trivial thing to go and build a launch site, a private one. Um, but uh, but no, I think I think that, that the decisions here were 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 exactly right, and um, you know LC one has just uh, has, has so much you know operational benefit. Uh, you know, if, if we if we roll a rocket out into the pad and, and we look at the sky and decide, you know what, today's not the day, then um, we just come back tomorrow. And there is no range scheduling, there is no congestion, there is there's no range fees. Um, it's 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 just it's just utopia from from that perspective. And now having a, an additional pad there just gives us even even more flexibility um, and and more opportunities. You mentioned range fees. You know, industry wide, how how much are the range fees like? How much would you have to pay, you know, for a federal range for, to access it for a day? Well, it, it really depends on the range and how many range assets you pull up. Um, you know, if you have an AFTS system, obviously you don't need to pull up a whole lot, whole you know, whole bunch of uh, of you know manual flight termination systems. If you've got a vehicle with uh, with with kind of not much history, then um, you know you probably have radar tracking that uh, as as a second source as well. Um, I, you know, I saw some numbers published a few days ago that that you know Astra's launch at the Cape, they they spent 1.5 million dollars on range fees. Um, so you know, it, and it, and it's in that order, right? Um, unfortunately, it 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 doesn't matter how big or small your rocket is um, as to how much those range fees are, because the assets that are called up and the people sitting in the seats are the same, whether or not you're launching a small launch vehicle or a giant launch vehicle. Um, the difference being, of course, that a giant launch vehicle, you, you've got a much, much larger um, you know, price point that you can amortize those costs over. A small launch vehicle, it's super, super tough. Um, and that's why we built a private range. Um, you know, it really, it, you, you have to, 
the operational cost of a rocket far outweighs a bill of materials or, or any other any, any other aspect. And you will you will have seen kind of our approach with Neutron is is really um, addressing that pretty well front on. Are you still planning to launch uh, Neutron from uh, Virginia? Is that still what you're looking at? It's fair to say that we're running a, a very competitive process for Neutron's home, and we'll be making an announcement about um, about that very very shortly. And uh, wherever you choose, you're going to be also building a, a landing site for the first stage, right? Well, exactly, and it's not just a launch site and a landing site; it's the entire factory. So, um, you know, having the having the, the factory close to the launch site is is, is fundamental to um, you know to, to really reducing those uh, the, the, those costs. But also, um, you know, Neutron is a very large diameter vehicle, and uh, you know, transporting it down the road is not an easy thing. And uh, before I let you go, can you update me on uh, some of the testing and preparations you have going for? Uh, recovering the first stage of Electron. Uh, I know you're the, ne the next time you try that, you're going to be trying to catch it with a helicopter at last uh, report. Uh, how are those preps going and when do you expect to make that attempt? Yeah, so the, the helicopter is uh, completely fitted out. All the modifications are done. Um, I believe it was loaded, it's either loaded on a ship or it's about to be loaded on a ship. And, uh, and, and um, we'll, we'll see that helicopter uh, very shortly. And then once, once it gets here, um, then there's a few, you know, a few small tests we need to do, but uh, we'll be we'll be straight into it. Um, the recovery team has has been flat out um, doing uh, doing a lot of um, a lot of full scale tests at the moment. So uh, no, we're feeling feeling really good about that, and it'll be good to to get this final kind of piece done and um, get on with reusability. You expect that later this year? Yeah, no, we, we absolutely will have a, we'll have that have this attempt. Um, uh, you know, in, in a relatively short time frame, actually. And, uh, you know, three launch pads in rotation now. How many missions uh, do you have on your books for uh, calendar year 2022? Yeah, so 2022 is a, is a really busy year for us. Um, last year, we really got, uh, we really got hampered with uh, New Zealand uh, government COVID restrictions. And it was, um, you know, we, we, you know, previous, last year, I think we got five, six launches off. Previous year, we did eight. Uh, so, you know, this year we're looking to, you know, to, to at least double uh, what we launched last year. Okay, Peter Beck, thank you so much for your time. Thanks very much, Stephen. It's great chatting.